Good morning and welcome to this week. Hello, everybody. Happy, happy Friday before Labor Day. Uh, Labor Day is brought to you by the U.S. working class and their trade unions. If it wasn't for them, it wouldn't be a Labor Day. Actually, we're lucky in the United States. We get to celebrate two, one on May Day and now this one in September, which was kind of a replacement for May Day. But, you know, okay, we ain't, we're, not, we're not mad at you. Um, it happened. So we'll just have May both. Day you celebrate the working class, Scott, is a good day, right? Any day, every day, celebrate the working class. Hi, Rosanna. Good morning. Good morning. How, How are, you? are you? Hope good, good, good. And we got Anita here. Hey, Anita. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, everybody. And last but not least, the great Michael uh, Lynch from. Uh, well, he always kind of debates where he's from, but he's a Buckeye as far as we're concerned. Hey, Michael. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Good Happy Western early Labor Day. Happy early Labor Day. Michael got his brim on, I got mine on too. You know, even though you're not supposed to wear it, but I'm just too lazy. <laughs> it's been a long, hot, hot summer. Now we got this tremendous campaign in front of us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about it in uh, just a moment. A lot of things happened during the week. Um, I saw yesterday that uh, the Speaker of the House, Mrs. Uh, Pelosi, is it Mrs. or Ms. Anita? You always correct I'd say me. it's um, Representative Pelosi or Representative Speaker Pelosi. Speaker Pelosi. Pelosi. Speaker Pelosi. Uh, she might be President Pelosi, depending on what happens in November. If there's a stalemate, she's third in the line of secession. She and the Secretary of the Treasury um, reached an agreement avoiding a government shutdown. Hmm. And I, I think that's a good thing, but there's been such gridlock in the House and the Senate. Nothing, nothing can be done, uh, seemingly. And Congress has a very low approval rating. But I was wondering, is that really the right way to formulate it, uh, uh, Anita? Is it really gridlock? Well, I, I think it is in a way gridlock. It's, it's each side really digging in their heels and, uh, and taking a position. And I think that's what we were experiencing with the HEROES Act. The House passed that uh, weeks ago and the Senate is not even in the picture. The Senate is um, you know, uh, immaterial. Uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi has to uh, um, negotiate with the White House rather than the Senate. So uh, I think just each side is really dug in and they, I think the Democrats realize this is the last chance to pass the HEROES Act or something like it on um, some relief. And, uh, and that's what um, th they're holding out for the best deal. But On the other hand, Rosanna, you could argue that it's a false equivalent that the, that the labor influenced, people influenced Democratic Party has come up with proposals, and the goddamn Republicans are just saying no, 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 no. What do you think, Rosanna? I, I, I think that the American people should question why the Republican Party is acting this way. Mm. You know, and should question whether they have, do they really have the people's best interests as they continue to play to uh, claim to do? Do they really have the family? first kind of concept do they really have all you know all of these things that they've been uh stating that they're for in terms of our well-being aren't isn't really sh being shown in in action you know to go away on vacation knowing full well so many people aren't going to have the money to eat or to keep mm. their home do they really care about the american people and i hope that people are able to ask that question for them and answer that question. I say, no, I don't care. And it don't look like it, uh, Scott. It don't look like they care. So is it well, gridlock or is it a false equivalent? I mean, who I'm, is to blame? The, 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 the right is to blame. Um, the people have, it is, it is clear, there is no question that there is a, a crisis, that people need relief. Um, the, the Democratic Party under the influence of the mass movement has come up with a, a bill and yeah, it's the, 
the Republican controlled Senate is, you know, um, refusing to do anything, um, partially because they want to secure more tax cuts for the rich. They want um, um, corporations to be immune to liability for uh, workers getting sick on the job. Um, they want, I think they want to give Trump a chance to look like the, the hero and, you know, he uh, gave out that, you know, personally authorized that $300 uh, payment, whatever, right? But when you, I mean, they, they don't care. They don't care about people, just like Rosanna said. And when you, you compare that to what Trump said in his speech at the Republican National Convention, blasting uh, Biden for not caring about the working class, I think this just really, it shows the incredible level of, of cynicism. Wait, 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 wait. Now, look, they, 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 Center for Disease Control said eviction moratoriums, uh, uh, Michael, until the end of the year. How can you say that they don't care? I mean, they're they are just staging. They're they're staging everything. Like like kind of Scott was hearing, uh, alluding to that. Trump, you know, as the elections approach in November, you know, late October, early November, at least what a lot of the political analysis are saying is that, you know, all of a sudden there will be no more postal service crisis. All of a sudden there will be some form of aid that comes out, whether it be, you know, the mm. Europe Act because Trump endorses it or he'll do an executive order. They're buying their time and pushing their pencils around, it seems, going on vacation, like Rosanna was saying, um, because it really doesn't affect them. It's affecting the everyday workers. And, you know, I think us being out on the streets as a communist party and the, and the uh, you know, young communists out on the streets every day talking to these people, it's amazing how many are affected, you know, and that they come up to you and say, you know, they accept the food we're giving out at mutual aid. And they say, you know, I've been out of work for, um, you know, three months and my 600 bucks expired. You know, I'm not getting that anymore. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know, you know, and so they can say whatever, you know, they want that eviction moratoriums are, are, are you know, extend until the end of the year. I see more and more homeless on the street every day. So, you know, we'll see it's how this terrible. goes. It's terrible here in New York. You're right about that. And the, and let's the not homeless forget people, the, go on. I was gonna say, let's not forget that those are, there's conditions to those moratoriums. It's not just mm -hmm. cut and dry. There's a lot mm. of conditions that you have to sign some kind of affidavit. You have to prove this and prove that. So it's not automatic. And then you have to pay back. I think you have to pay back rent. So do. it's going to be, you know, enormous bill is going to be due uh, yeah. in the future. So it's really You're only- going to be homeless nonetheless. Pay back with what, you know, <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> that's a question I asked my neighbor. My neighbor uh, walking into his house uh, last night, he was saying he gets a state, not the federal, but like a state unemployment kind of, uh, you know, benefit, 500 bucks a week, but he has to give 300 back or he gets in big trouble and it's, but he doesn't know why. And, you know, it's just, it, that, it doesn't make any sense, you know. I don't, yeah, we don't know the particulars. So my, you were trying to, so Michael, you were saying that, um, that the uh, eviction moratorium, it's kind of like when I was coming up, every uh, time there was an election, just before the election, they would pave the roads, right? The streets would get paved. They wouldn't pave them bad boys for four years, but, you know, the month before the election, you know, they would be out there trying to pave the, uh, to pave the uh, streets. Well, Trump paved his way to Kenosha the mm -hmm. other day, and he stood with the police uh, and, and uh, some businesses. The one businessman I saw didn't want to take a picture with him. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> I had a friend from South Africa and Bush uh, came and uh, Bush asked him, do you want to take a picture with me? The guy was a leader in the ANC. And, 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 and the brother said, no, thank you. He said, I don't know anybody who would want to look at this picture. He said, who would want <laughs> He said, my family, my, my, nobody wants to see you. So I guess the, the guy kind of felt the same way. Um, but can you imagine, Anita, that, that Trump won't condemn the shooting. It's out. By... Yeah, he's really trying to foment more violence because he thinks that's a, a strategy for him. And his, uh, I, I think Kellyanne Conway went on and said the, the the worse it gets, the better it is for 
Trump's re-election chances. So it's it's very dangerous what what's going on now. It's not surprising to me that he he doesn't condemn uh, that violence. Uh, it serves him really. He fomented. I think he, Kelly he said Kelly, really revealing. Kelly, come again. He said something really revealing in his speech, um, talking to to police officers. Something like, you know, you're not hearing it from the people on the street. You're not hearing it from the people of this country. But you know, we all love you. So he, I mean, even he, you know, the the narrowness and 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 weakness of his base is coming out. It, this this call to violence is not because he is in a strong position. It's because his the position of the extreme right is is weak, and the only way they can win at this point is by trying to impose violence and, and drag the the democratic upsurge into uh, violent confrontations. Um, and I think that the lesson there, Scott, is don't let yourself get provoked, people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't let your... I got into a big fight, you know, once, about 20 years ago, political fight. And Cy Gerson, who was uh, an old leader of the party, Rosanna, he uh, was a campaign manager for uh, Vito Marcantonio and, and Ben Davis. So I was in the middle of that fight, and he leaned over to me and he said, Joe? Don't let yourself get provoked. You know, I thought it was good advice. <laughs> you know, but yeah. I think that that's that's uh, when you see people breaking windows and that kind of thing, Rosanna, you got to say, "Yo, stop that!" You know, there, there's more here at stake than your anger. Am I wrong about that? No, I think I think you're perfectly correct. Um, that that's exactly the way that they change people's minds. And, and, you know, and steer away from the focus of what you're actually out there on the streets doing, mm. you know, and so it's, it's, it's not just uh, co uh, containing your anger for yourself, but it's, it's looking at the bigger picture that you're out there, you know, uh, to, to protest what is wrong and, and you want to stay focused on the issue not allow anything to to divert from that to deviate from that issue and usually these kind of violence uh, actions that's what happens the media is all over it if there's a window broken you know so and then but the problem the effect of it is that then people's minds begin to to shift or their ideas and say oh you know they're just a bunch of rebel rousers and they don't really mean anything they you know what if they're just tearing up property instead of understanding, you know, what the actual uh, cause is. Now on the issue of tearing up property, Scott, uh, sometimes I think that they're more concerned, and I'm not advocating, you know, but I think that they're more concerned about property, quote unquote, than people. It you know what I mean? It certainly looks that way. I mean, but isn't it's, that the uh, whole, sorry, go for it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about, about capitalism as a whole and, and its relation to democracy, isn't that what it is, right? The, the, you know, the property rights of the capitalist class, the right to do whatever you want with what you own um, is always valued above the, the rights of people, the rights that, that we all have just as human beings and, and, and citizens of, of this country. Um, so it's- And we say you know, people before profits. What's right? that? We say people before profits. People before profits. People before profits. Now, Michael, some people are calling for, I saw some people calling for the death penalty for that woman and her son, that they, they, that, that 17 year old who had that AR killed them too. They wanna, if they're convicted, what do you think? Death penalty? No, Michael? no, that no? goes against, no, we're not for that. We're not for the death penalty. You know, that would we would look like hypocrites because, you know, we're not for the death penalty. Um, and you go back even to uh, the Rosenbergs and what was done to the Rosenbergs. Right. We would be you know, we would look like hypocrites if we were to endorse that. But also, if you relate it to the topic we were just discussing in terms of, you know, destroying property, breaking windows, you don't fight violence with violence. You don't fight looting because they I mean, they loot the working class. They loot, you know. We don't fight looting with looting. We don't fight death penalty with death penalty, right? They kill, you know, and we kill back. What does that solve? What does that solve? And how does that help the movement as a whole? If this uh, 
young man and his mother were to get the death penalty, right? And the same thing can be asked, you said, for looting. You know, if we were to break a window and loot while we're marching out there, how does that help the movement? And I'll never forget um, a comrade who was marching with us um, in New York, and she saw two young men who I don't think they were, you know, provocateurs, but they got fired up and they went to break a window and she jumped in the middle and she said, you believe in Black Lives Matter, right? They said, yeah. She goes, okay, how is breaking a window of an Indian run cafe helping the movement for black lives? Mm. And they put the chair down. Mm. And I think, but I think it's the same way with, with the death penalty. I understand people, I understand the anger. I understand, you know, they want justice and they think the quickest form of justice would be for this teenage boy and his mother to be put to death. But how is that going to help the movement? Right. Are we going to, you know, then then send the next two, you know, um, mo the mother and son of the next, you know, victims uh, to the to the electric chair to the, you know, to get the injection. It doesn't make sense. Why are we for Scott expropriating the expropriators? I mean, and huh? So I was I was going to say, yeah, you know, there are, there's a distinction that has to be made. Um, you know, the unemployed councils at the very beginning, uh, back in the 30s, um, when people were starving and there was no relief, they took food. Um, they surrounded uh, bread trucks and took what was needed to feed their families. Um, and we don't consider that, I don't consider that anyway, an act of looting. Um, the, there's a difference, I think, between, you know, smashing something, taking stuff to kind of as an act of political expression to make a point, um, that's, that I don't think is useful, but um, you know, starving people uh, taking food they need to feed themselves, that's, for me, that's a different case. Um, well, Nita, let me ask you a question. When I was in junior high school, at Hillman Junior High School in Youngstown, Ohio, on the south side on Myrtle Street, on uh, April the 4th, the day Dr. King was assassinated, we had a school walkout, all the junior high school, and we mm -hmm. went over to the neighborhood store and we shoplifted everything in the store. We took beer, we took bread, we took <laughs> bologna, <laughs> we took anything, cheese, pop, soda pop, potato chips. This is wow. true, this is a true story. Mm -hmm. And we went down to the park and we had a picnic. Now, was that looting, Anita? Or was that expropriation? Well, it was it was mischief. It was uh, junior high school uh, kids. Um, I I wonder what the I would like to hear more about what the consequences were after that mm. uh, for your relationship with the store owner, as well as <laughs> whether there were any consequences for the kids involved. Some of them had hangovers. I can tell. Oh. That. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was. <laughs> One of my fondest memories, I can tell you. We we had a good old we had a good old we had a good old time. But Scott, uh, um, I mean, um, let's 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 talk a little bit about uh, the uh, campaign so far, and um, what it's going to take to defeat um, Mr. Trump. Now I say. Um, it's going to, um, I'm a little worried because I think that the, the, the race is tightening. You know, Rosanna, I, I think the race is, is, is getting closer. And um, uh, and I, I get the feeling that people are overconfident. In California, is there like a really big get out the vote campaign? There's a lot of organizations that are, are mobilizing for that get out the vote. Mm. Unions are also, you know, I get text messages about you want to help voter registration, you want to be a poll worker. Uh, Poor People's Campaign is also working on getting out the vote, reaching out to your contacts, most, most importantly, reaching out to your family and contacts and, and staying connected with them, helping them through this new process. Because in California, we were told that we we're all going to vote uh, by mail. Mm -hmm. That if we're already registered, we're automatically will get a vote by mail uh, mm -hmm. ballot. <clears throat> so um, that's good news. That's good news. Yes, but some some people are not. This this would be my first time voting by mail. I always like going to the polls, yeah. taking my picture after voting, and making sure that you know I post it everywhere so that people can 
remember to go out and vote. You know, it's just my little bit I do. <clears throat> but yeah, in California, there is a lot of organizations that are understand the need to vote. And then there's people who are, oh, we, you know, we don't need to vote. But I don't think that's not the majority here in California, not at all. In Ohio, think, Anita, is Trump 10 points ahead? No, I think he's, uh, he's uh, Biden is one point ahead the last I, I looked, which is very close. Uh, slim margin, right. Um, but I think I, I think I have confidence that Ohio will um, come through. I think turnout is going to be huge here. We had a very big turnout in 2018, um, and mm. I think the turnout will be good. And 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 I think, or well, our administration is um, uh, Republican. Frank LaRose is our the secret, uh, you know, in charge of the election. I I think it'll be okay, you know, for now. He he promises to you know purge the rolls after the election, so we'll struggle there. But um, but right now I I I think. I, my ballot is tracked and everything. It's uh, I'm, I have a lot of confidence in the vote by mail process right now in Ohio. And in the great state of Pennsylvania, where you're from and where you grew up, right next door to Joe Biden, <laughs> Scott, and, you know where your family had beers with his family. Oh yeah, Sunday. for sure, great friends. Um, <laughs> Scott, I think y'all a little bit related. You know, isn't he like a fourth cousin or something? Yeah, uncle, <laughs> yeah, my uncle Joe. <laughs> Uncle Joe, how's it looking in the state of Pennsylvania? So I'm I'm actually in New York now. I live just oh, over the border. Oh, you're in New York. Okay. Yeah. Um, grew up in Pennsylvania. I now live like three minutes away from Pennsylvania in New York State. Uh, um, Pennsylvania looks like it's you know, um, well, my area is solidly Republican on both sides of the border, um, mm. but I think. Even here, there's there's some more people moving away from Trump. There are people questioning, um, kind of uh, what he stands for. People who thought, you know, we need somebody who's going to get something done, whatever. Um, but but I don't know what that's going to mean. Um, but I think the question of what it's going to take to defeat Trump, you know, a, a mass movement, as you, as you said in a recent article, to get there. But the real question for me is how do we take apart this system that produced Trump? And I mean, capitalism broadly, yes, but specifically this political apparatus of the extreme right, these, these white supremacist militia groups, the, the propaganda networks, the, the, you know, the think tanks and, and um, uh, groups funding, you know, voter suppression drives and all that. How do we break them apart not just get the republic like sweep out the republican majorities in legislative houses but take apart the infrastructure of them and that, that's what i need i want to see after the after we win this election we need to move to we need to stop considering that this that the party of trump is a normal uh you know part of the the american political landscape it's not it has to go I I think we have, oh, sorry. Go on. Go on. I think we have to reverse the policies that have taken over since the 1970s, the corporate policies that have left uh, unions decimated and uh, deregulation and all of those policies that really took hold in the 70s and 80s and that we're really seeing the consequences, the dire consequences of right now. Was I agree. I agree, Anita. And I think we can undo a lot of these policies and defeat Trump by legal means, by, you know, using the institutions that already exist, right, even though we don't always agree with them, of course, and sometimes they work against our interests, and the, you know, the interests of the working people, but I'm very inspired by an article um, that's on the CPUSA website, um, and it's uh, republished by Engels, I believe it's a, uh, an introduction by Engels to Marx's writings on the civil wars in France, I believe, and I think it was written around 1895, and he was talking about how at that time, in Europe, you know, um, they weren't storming Bastilles, they weren't, you know, trying to lead peasant revolts, but they were using the means necessary, you know, in the Marxist um, political parties, you know, and working even sometimes with uh, bourgeois political parties to make gains for working people, and how the legal, the, le the legal ways to, to, to work within the system were much more effective, and the ruling class feared that. They fear working people using these legal forms and mass numbers 
than if they were to go out in the streets and, you know, be shooting people and breaking windows, looting and all that. And so I think, you know, if we were to apply that to modern day context, because that's where kind of we are right now, I feel in the struggle, it would be to get every black and brown working voter, especially to vote, every student to vote and just flood those damn polls, those ballot boxes in November and just overwhelm the hell out of the ruling class. That would surprise them. It would catch them off guard. And I think the outcome would be good, not just at the presidential level, you know, because, of course, the struggle continues there, but up and down the ballot. Right. It has to be decisive. It has to be everywhere at every level. We have to make gains and prevent these uh, further setbacks. I think we got to get the white working class, uh, middle class men and women to vote, too. We need a decisive defeat. And it sounds to me like, Scott, you're talking about defunding the Republican Party and and you're talking about abolishing the Republican Party. Um, absolutely. The, I mean, so it's, this is not a question of the battle of ideas, right? It's not a question of, you know, outlawing whatever Republican position. It's a question of, yeah, of, of taking away the ability of this tiny, ultra-reactionary, ultra-rich minority to use their property to destroy and dismantle the democratic forms um, that, that, you know, we've built in this country. Um, Here's a news alert, people. Here's a news alert. I want you all to listen to what I'm saying. Scott is calling for defunding the Republican Party, <laughs> which is a radical, extreme demand. <laughs> but they used to call that public financing of elections. Yep. Public, Rosanna, financing of the elections, a normal thing. Uh, put in today's context, defunding the uh, GOP. Let's take all the money out, private money, give everybody the same thing. That would be an advance, right? I think so. For well, me, absolutely. That, huh? Oh, the, uh, overturning Citizens United would be the beginning. Overturning of that. Citizens United, you know, these are important steps. But that just goes back to the status quo ante. We need right. radical reform. And I'm gonna tell you something, unless we get that $600, it's gonna be hell to pay. So between now and uh, the end of the month, we gotta fight for that 600. We gotta make sure that our people turn out to vote. We gotta give them something to fight for. We gotta end this racist police violence. You saw what they did in upstate New York. They suffocated that young man. Uh, you know, it just goes on and on and on and on. And, 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 and uh, 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 so we got to keep fighting, not let ourselves be provoked, uh, uh, sit in, strike, boycott, occupy, vote on election day. I think that, that we have been talking for a half hour. <laughs> So Rosanna and I have a, a, a meeting right now, so we have to end. I want to thank everybody for showing up. Uh, keep your spirits up. Stay healthy. Uh, stay safe. Stay physically distant, but socially close. Good morning, revolution. I don't think I even said that this morning. I got so excited. Yeah. So have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to Bye. you later. Bye. Bye. Later, comrades. Bye. Good morning, revolution. <laughs>